This video is one in a series of videos covering how to make a car body for automation, the car company tycoon game, from start to finish. In this video, we're going to fill out our wheel wells. I'm going to start by selecting this inner edge loop, and I'll extrude it inward, constrained to the x-axis, and in the action window, I'll set the distance to 2 centimeters. Now this new extrusion copies the vertex weight from the vertices they were extruded from, so the shrink wrap modifier is still pulling them to the surface of the target mesh. So I'll jump into Object Data tab and remove the vertices from the shrink wrap group. Now you can see the lip. I'm going to go back to the first edge loop. And I'll turn up the mean bevel weight so the edge of the wheel arch will have a smooth bevel to it. Taking a look at the wireframe. Looks good. Let's continue on with making this wheel well. I'll orient the camera behind the wheel arch. I'm going to set this vertex here as the pivot point. I'll turn off auto merge to prevent unintended vertex merging for the next steps. I'll make sure the pivot point is set to bounding box center. Now I'll extrude and scale out along the Y axis, using S, Y, and the mouse to scale outward. Now I'll switch the pivot point to active element, and I'll scale up along the Z axis using Z, Y, and the mouse to scale upward. Now I'll switch into edge select mode. I'll select our two new edge loops that make up our wheel lip, and I'll assign sharp edge. If you don't have sharp edges assigned to your quick access menu, you can find it here in the edge menu. Now I want to select this inside edge loop, but if I do, it actually selects the entire loop around the car. I just want the immediate edge loop, so all I have to do is just select it again and Blender will know what I'm trying to do and just select the wheel lip. Now I'll extrude one more time. I'll select this vertex here. And I'll hit the SX0 hotkey combo to line this edge loop up flat. Now I want to assign the plastic material to it. So with the edge loop still selected, I'll press Ctrl plus on the numpad, and that will select the next edge loop over, which makes up the entire wheel arch. Now I'll run over to the Materials tab and add a material. And I'll assign the plastic material to it. To finish this up, I'll select this inner edge loop, and I'll remove the sharp edge from it by setting the edges to smooth. Now I'll press Ctrl-3 to get into side orthographic view, and still using the active element as my pivot point, I'll scale down on the z-axis. Now I'll switch to bounding box center as my pivot point, and I'll scale in on the y-axis. And there we go, a completed wheel well. Just repeat these same steps for the rear. There is only one step that's a little different. We'll get to it in a minute. When I get to the point of flattening out the last extrusion, I'll actually select a vertex on the front wheel arch as my active element. This way, when I press the SX0 hotkey combo, the new extrusion lines up perfectly with the front wheel arch. Finally, I'll audit the wheel arch for excess geometry. Now, we don't need five tight edges here, so I'll select one edge, turn auto merge editing back on, and I'll edge slide these five edges and merge them together. I'm going to take a minute now to make sure that our new geometry has the proper seam and seam pole vertex groups assigned to them.
Now I'll repeat these steps at the front arch. Before we declare the wheel arch is finished, we need to make sure we get the bevel modifier applied in such a way that it is not impacted and thus thrown askew by the shrink wrap modifier. Notice the order of modifiers here. The bevel modifier is below the two shrink wrap modifiers. At this point, we are done with the shrink wrap, so we can apply those in order, then apply the bevel modifier. If we were to apply the bevel modifier first, then the shrink wrap, the bevel would be pulled out to be made flush with the target mesh. The order of modifier application here is important. We no longer need any bevel weight on our model, so as an order of housekeeping, let's highlight the entire mesh and remove all bevel weight. Taking a close look, we can see the bevel is applied properly. Conversely, you could continue to use the shrink wrap, but you will need to manually select the two innermost bevel loops and remove them from the shrink wrap vertex group so they are not out of whack. that'll do it. This will conclude this video. If you found it useful, give the video a like and hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this one as they're released. See you next time!